What's well, up, dudes? Um, I didn't plug my mic in for the the thing I just recorded, but uh, hopefully this is uh, has a lot better sound quality thingy. Uh, here we go. The team matchup, uh, not a team matchup. The team I prepared for the Miami Heat runs. Basically, the Miami Heat runs team. I will quickly show it in the. Uh, fuck. Um, yeah, you can see the score. Cool. <laughs> um, yeah, you actually can't see anything. Cool. Um, the Miami Heatrons. Uh, Miami Heatrons, Miami Heatrons, Miami Heatrons. There we go, Miami Heatrons. Come here, Tiger versus Miami Heatrons, week one. Score not available. Uh, actually, you cannot see that, but uh, now you can. And the team, Miami Heatrons team. There we go. Basically, Mega Godavor, Gudra, Raiko, Ferthorn, Polytoad, Toxicroak, Shiftry, Tornadus, and Staraptor. And I will quickly get this thing out of the way because you will not be able to see everything. Um, the mons I expect Alec to bring. Alec is the coach of the Miami Heatrons. Basically, Ferrothorn, because Ferrothorn is his only stealth rocker, is his only form of hazard support. Uh, I think he is gonna bring Raiko because Raiko is the fastest mon on his team. Plus, it's the only one that really can take care of my uh, one of my win conditions. Um, Mega Gordivore because I lack switchings to Mega Gordivore. Toxicroak because Toxicroak is pretty threatening if I will play Toxicroak. Uh, Toxicroak gets uh, faces against my team. I think he's gonna bring Gudra because Gudra is solid as all fuck and takes up hits for days. And yeah, and I think he's gonna bring Polytoad because Polytoad for the rain support for his Ferrothorn to not die to HP fires or anything. Um, and yeah, that's the, the team I think he's gonna bring. Uh, some noticeable flaws in his team are the, the things that I just noticed in general. Uh, it's a rain team, at least a semi rain team, because he doesn't have any Swift Sim users or anything. The only thing that really gets the support from rain is Toxicroak and Kudra, I guess, and Ferrothorn, because the weakness is gone to fire. So, not the most solid rain team, I think, but it's a rain team nonetheless. Um, he's got Defog support uh, in Staraptor and Shiftry, but I doubt he's gonna run it because, yeah, it's just with Ferrothorn being his only setter, it's not likely that he's gonna run Defog on either of them. Um, at, his priority is basically uh, Sucker Punch from Toxic Croak, Sucker Punch from Shift 3, and I think Quick Attack or something from. Uh, yeah, well, ESP from Raikou, of course, but Quick Attack from Staraptor. And the Prankster from uh, Tornadus. Tornadus? Yeah, Tornadus. Tornadus the Prankster, right? That's the Tornadus. Yeah, that's the Tornadus. Tornadus T is the Regenerator one. Yeah, never mind me. Um, nothing, uh, like I said, nothing with speed increase from Rain. Um, so I do not have to worry about that as much. He's got no cleric except for Mega Gardevoir. He is decently taunt weak and magic bounce weak. And he has a huge weakness to ice. His only resist to ice is Polytoad. And that is of course one of the reasons why I think he's gonna bring Polytoad. Also has a slight weakness uh, to fairy flying fire as well. Uh, fire of course if he's not in the ring. And last but not least, the thing I noticed is he does not have a ground type, and not an electric immunity in general. Uh, the threats I read well prepared for uh, defensively were, of course, the Mega Gordifor because Mega Gordifor was a threat. I lacked switches, like I said. Uh, the Toxic Croak was to an extent a threat because uh, the, my counter to Toxic Croak is also my check to Gordifor. And it's also my check to uh, Raiko, which is also the threat to my team, because Raiko is the only thing, like I said, that really stops me from sweeping him with my win condition. And Shift 3 could be a problem if I will play Shift 3, uh, or like a Shift 3 with a set that I did not prepare for, uh, came into play. So uh, that's, the, that's the things I prepared for, I things I uh, didn't want to happen, didn't want to see. And yeah, uh, his team he brought, I can actually share the game right here. Like I said, I prepared him to bring Ferriton, Raikou, Mega Gordvar, Toxicroak, Kudra and Polytoad. And the exact team, as you can see, the exact team was brought to the game. And this is my first time I had all six months um, completely right, so that's a good start to the season. Um, but yeah, uh, let's go into the battle. Um, I can quickly run seconds. Uh, how do I change the... Okay, onto my team. 
the thing, the win condition I brought this match was Cobalion. And Cobalion is a taunt, Iron Head, Close Combat, Sword Stance Cobalion. And as you can see, his team, I will quickly uh, show this, his team once again. His team is Megor for Kudra, Terratorn, Politoed, Toxic Rogue, Shift 3, Tornado's Eye, and Staraptor. And as you can see, I ran Shopo Berry because he has a lot of fighting moves. Uh, Mega Gorfor can run Fox Blast, uh, Raikou can run Arm Sphere, Touch Cloud, Drain Punch, Shift 3 can run against Low Kick, Fox Blast, uh, Staraptor runs Close Combat, this can run uh, Super Power. So a lot of fighting um, moves to hit up the, uh, the Cobalion, uh, which is why I ran Shopo Berry instead of, I don't know, like Rogue Leftovers, whatever, or Berry. <clears throat> so, yeah. And as you can see, it outspeeds everything on the team except for Raikou. And the only thing that really can take up hits is, I guess, Politoed. Uh, I am not really afraid of Tornado's Eye, to be honest. So that's why I don't call Tornado's Eye. Uh, and of course, Scorvers. But uh, Politoed is basically a defensive Politoed, is the only thing that also deals well with um, Cobalion. But other than that, he's Mega Guard for the dice. Uh, Good Red that doesn't live a hit now. Now that plus two at least, uh, and I can fancy it debating. Uh, Ferrothorn um, can't really do too much to me. Uh, I can set up a little town that I can just close combat with it as well. So, uh, Toxic Croak, uh, I have got a berry for it, and um, if the berry is still intact, I can just set up and then uh, knock it out afterwards with an Iron Head. Uh, Shift 3, uh, same thing, can knock it out afterwards. Uh, his both of his steps do not touch me, so. Uh, Tornado's Eye, like I said, is not gonna be a problem. I can also set up on this because at least unless it's like uh, Fox Blast, but uh, I don't think it's too difficult to take Tornado's Eye down anyway. And Surreptor, if he's gonna bring it, it's more likely gonna be something like Scarf. So um, again, I gotta if the berry is intact, then I'm I'm fine. Uh, so yeah, the, this is the the, the Wing Nation I brought to the team. Next up is Nidoqueen, Queen, and Nidoqueen Queen is running. Finally a different set, it's, this time it's a Lure near the Queen. And it's a Lure near the Queen, especially defensive fully because it's meant to take on either the Mega Gordivore, because uh, I spring it in on a Hyper Voice, uh, like a very type of Hyper Voice, and then he goes to the Psychic slash Side Shock and I take him down with the Potion Jab. Or he brings, I bring it in on a Raikou and he goes for Extra Sensory afterwards and I take him down with an Earthquake. That's basically the two situations, the two. Um, yeah, the two situations I had in mind for uh, this lure a needle queen to be used. Um, at first it was for God of War, but I figured that Raikou was, in, like I said, the, the bigger threat because it stopped me from sweeping with my Cobalion. So, uh, depending on the matchup, uh, I'm gonna use it for uh, either of those. Next up is Mega Absol. Mega Absol because it stops Ferrothorn from sending up hazards. Um, he can, uh, however, just do good damage if he's like. Bandit or something, Bandit, Power Whip, then he's gonna do good damage to my team with uh, that move. Uh, it's, it runs Will-O-Wisp, Knockoff, Super Power and Sucker Punch. And it's uh, it's Jolly because his fastest mount is Raikou and uh, I I can go Adamant and go for Sucker Punch but I fear a set like um, uh, Substitute Calm Mind or just Calm Mind or just Substitute. Any of the sets are, could be a problem for my team. It can even be 4 attacks and still be a problem to be honest because he kind of needs all the coverage, at least he could use all the coverage against my team depending on how the rest of the team uh, prepares. But uh, yeah, I, I brought my gaps because it just just does do massive damage to his team uh, if I bring it in and I can hit up something on his team for good damage. Uh, next up is Archeops. Archeops is Choice Scarf because it's another preparation for his uh, Raikou. Unless his Raikou is Choice Scarf, then I can defeat it with Earthquake. Uh, it also carries Stealth Rocks in case I want to lead up with it and he doesn't have a lead that I fear. Um, and get yeah, Stealth Rocks and then reveals Choice Scarf later on. And just Rock Slide Heat Wave. Heat Wave for the uh, Fair Turn in case he does not uh, want to bring uh, a Rain. And Rock Slide just for Stab and Flames Powers. Uh, next up is Menifee. Uh Menifee is not going to be my win condition, although it looks like it uh, possibly. It's going to be some kind of wall break type, that type of thing, just to smash some holes in his team. It has Scald, Ice Beam, Tail Glow, Substitute. Um, I could run something like Energy Ball for his uh, Polito because like I said, Polito is his, is, is his only Ice Resist. But I figured that Scald in the rain would do just as good and I can get burns and yeah, stuff like that. 
it's not gonna be the best one, uh, more than likely because um, uh, I don't know what I was gonna say. Uh, because his uh, he has multiple checks. I guess Raiko is a good check um, to Murphy, and also uh, Ferrothorn can do well. Politoid can do shenanigans if he prepares for it. Even Toxicroak can just um, do well against it if because I don't think a plus three Ice Beam even KOs Toxicroak, but. But we'll see, Manaphy is gonna hopefully put in the work. And Lantern, because Lantern is of course not a preparation for the right code just to stop him from pulse switching around. Uh, or just tough moves like those. Um, so yeah. As you can see the team he brought, because you might have seen this already. Um, the team he brought will be up in a second. Um, again Lantern, uh, side beam for the... At least, uh, really the only two moves I wanted to use with pulse switch and ice beam. Those, those really were, but then I figured that Hydrocom could be useful in case he was like a calm mindset or a substitute set on Raikou. And Hydrocom would at least break uh, substitutes that would do some decent damage against the calm mind uh, boost. Um, so, yes, that's why I read Hydrocom uh, as a third slot and Psybeam because it might be useful against the. Um, what's this face called? Against the Toxic Rock. I don't think it will be, but. I mean, I get side beam, so I figured, hey, side beam is better than HP psychic, so hey, side beam. But yes, onto the match. Give me a second. There we go. Like I said, I predicted his team perfectly because he brought Mega Gardevoir, Politoed, Gudra, Ferrothor, Raikou, and Toxic Croak. And he leads off with the Politoed, as you can see. I lead off with my Mega Absol in case he wants to lead off with his Ferrothor and I can stop the Stealth Rocks. But he makes a good lead. Uh, with the Politoed, he gets to the rain. Uh, I switch out here because in general I don't want to take a Focus Blast or a Scald in the rain. And I figured he could be Scarfed. If he is Scarfed, then uh, I do not want to take the hit because I will die. Um, so I switch into Lantern, my safest play. And uh, I can get a free Fault Switch off basically because he has no resist. At least no immunities. He does have a resist. Uh, I get a crit. I don't think it's gonna help. It really doesn't matter. I bring a Manaphy on this, and you might think Manaphy, Manaphy is a special attacker. What the fuck is it gonna do to, to Gudra? But, um, yeah. I don't, didn't know what Gudra, set of Gudra he was, and although I knew he was gonna run something like Power Whip, or even, yeah, just Power Whip in general, but nothing what he wanted to take a Draco Meteor, except for, um, Cobalion, but I wanted to preserve Cobalion as a win condition, so I didn't want to go out into it yet because I didn't know what type of uh, Gudra this was. If it was, for example, Scar Gudra, I could have been fucked if I tried to set up on it. So, uh, but yeah, so I go into Manaphy, uh, set up the substitute in case he wants to switch. I didn't expect him to switch, but uh, in case he wants to switch, and I get a select berry, so that's why. Um, so, I, yeah, the, the, unfortunately, he misses, and that's makes it easier for me to like break at his team kind of so it really is unfortunately missed and I'm sorry for that I really am but as you can see he did prepare for the Manaphy of course because Manaphy causes preparation on teams and he haste the um, he haste the uh, boosts away he's gonna go into Lexus the Araiko here um, I can set up a Tilglow I could just come from Skull but I mean Tilglow was my best play anyway so I can go for a good hit on the uh, incoming ring, uh, booster ring setter, uh, Politoed again. And he's gonna go into Lexus again because I do not have the select berry anymore. I go into Lantern, even though it's more than likely that he's not gonna go for an electric move, I am bulky enough to lift any hit from him, so. <coughs> Unless he has specs, but if he has specs, then he won't be as much of a problem, worthy enough. I'd go for the Hydro Pump. It might seem like a weird play because, like, you'd say, at least I was in, in the same position, like, afterwards. I was like, okay, I could just easily go for a fault just predicting his switch. But like I said, if he is calm mind, if he is substitute, I do not want to give him a free substitute with my fault switch and then have been a problem afterwards. Because my uh, like my best check to it at this point is uh, Needle Queen or the Scarfed, um, Scarfed Archeops, but either of them is going to die if he sets up a substitute. So that is why my I figured my safest play would just be go for the Hydro Pump and uh, break his substitute or break his call mines and go from there. Uh, he turns out switch out, I missed, it really doesn't matter because it's not going to do any damage anyway. 
switch into Cobalion to take uh, the incoming power whip and switch back into Menifee to uh, predicting his stealth rocks. Um, he doesn't go for stealth rocks, uh, also predicting his T wave if he cares the T wave because in the rain I have the hydration and uh, the T wave. Uh, uh, the, the T wave just gets neutralized. It doesn't happen. It never happens. So that's why I got on the just to try to get a skull burn on him. Uh, as you can see, he goes for the knockoff on my Cobalion. So that's a ballsy play, I think. So uh, well predicted on his part. Um, and I go into the Nidoqueen right here, expecting him to predict my flamethrower fire blast and going into Gudra. But it turns out he really is not fearing it or he, don't, he doesn't think it's going to do much damage at all. So. Um, which is surpri was surprising to me. Um, going to Absol, as you can see, unfortunately, Absol uh, does not carry the uh, justified ability, and that's my bad. So, unfortunately, because I would have been a plus one, and after this Will of Wisp and after being plus one, I would have been a massive threat. And he predicts me to, I guess, double switch because he goes for Elite Seed. Uh, so, yes, unfortunately. Don't get the knockout on good drop, but it really doesn't matter. But yeah, if it was plus one, I would have been a massive threat to this guy because I could just knock this guy off clean and Gorvar would have been gone. He would have not been existent. It does like 90% max without the boost, so I had to switch it into the Queen. And like I said, I am a Leo in the Queen. Um, at this point, if you can call uh, the Psychic is in fact kind of going to take me out, kind of not going to take me out. It's iffy, so... I had to roll in my favor, but if he besides shocked, then he would have probably taken me down. So that's why I stayed in expecting him to go for the uh, psychic type move. But it turns out he went, uh, makes a safe play into uh, into the, the this guy. Uh, go into Absol again because flamethrower are minus special attack nature because I like I said I am I'm basically physical and I do not want to take iron bar for seven with fire punch. So that's why I am uh, flamethrower. And I am like not minus speed, not minus uh, special defense or defense match because I want to use the God of Watch dash um, right now. So. Uh, it's not going to take him down at that point. Here I predict him to switch, predicting my superpower or fire blast, predicting him to switch into uh, the God of War because that just eats it up. And especially the superpower. And that's why I predict him to switch and go into Cobalion. But he makes another like good play and lead seats the uh, Mega Epsilon again, predicting my double switch. So well played on Hazilla's part. Go back into Cobalion. He again makes a prediction because he goes for a knockoff on the Cobalion, even though I'm justified. So, uh, go for the superpower right here, expecting him to just stay in and set this off, and which he does in fact do. Um, as he now goes into God of War, and here it gets kind of good for me because as you can see, the next turn he makes a misplay, and I get to keep Lantern. And um, yes, uh, I bring in Cobalion. Cobalion knocks him out from 100% guaranteed. If he is this set, I cocked it. He's not any running any defense investment, just uh, the standard combat God of War set. set. And yeah, he goes for a brick break on my Cobalion on the Chopper Berry, and I eat it up and can go for the uh, uh, can go for the Iron Head in uh, the, the following turn and knock him out clean. And here he goes into Lexus the Raiko, and I am at 5-0 currently, and my safest play, I didn't know at this point he was scarfed, but it turns out he is scarfed. My safest play was just to sack this off and see what happens. I could have sacked off anything really, but um, yeah, I guess my best sack would have been Lantern either way then, but uh, if he was Calm Mind, then I, I didn't want to lose to it, and if he was uh, yeah, Substitute Calm Mind, I didn't want to lose to it, so my best interest was just staying in and dying in. Yeah, I didn't want to choke the game away, so um, I didn't know he was scarfed at this point. I still didn't know because he didn't reveal it yet. My Manaphy was a select berry, but it got haste away to speed boost, so I didn't know if he was scarfed. Um, but he turns out to be scarfed. I could have gone into my scarfed Archeops, but I figured my uh, Leo Nidoqueen was a safer play, and it turns out he was scarfed, so it was definitely the best play for me to go into Nidoqueen. Uh, so I'm glad I didn't go into Archeops first and uh, go for the e try to outspeed him and go for the EQ. So. Um, I didn't go. In, I got doubt to go into Nidoking because I could have been flinched, and yeah. So, but Nidoking was the best play, and I take a 4-0 victory in my week one game against Hazilla against the Miami Heat Trends. Uh, it was a good game. He, I did think he made a misplay with the God of War, uh, although I feel that my Cobalion would have pulled through either way, and even my Archives would have pulled through. Um, actually, it wouldn't have because his 
uh, Scarf Brightco, but if he he couldn't have left himself into an electric move, so I think Scarf Brightco should still have been uh, doing some good damage to uh, to his team regardless. And Mega Epsilon at this point uh, with his default switch, the, the Sucker Punch is again would put in the work. Uh, I'm sorry for the hex against uh, the power whip from the good rep because that kind of matters. It kind of changed up the whole game a little bit. But um, yeah, this is the first game, and I'm glad I won the first game because the first game is always really big and always like, like if you lose the first game, then it could be it could play a big role in the next weeks. So yeah, I'm glad I won the first game, and I'm glad I am on a good path to being the number one at this point. Uh, spoiler alert, I'm not the number one yet because there were people with bigger scores and yeah, nothing I can do about that. Um, the scores in, uh, won't end up mattering too much, I don't think, in the end because I'm gonna win. If I am gonna win all of them, I am saying I'm gonna win all of them, of course, but I have to be somewhat less cocky and say if I'm gonna win all of them, then I don't need a good score to uh, be become first. So. Uh, so yeah, this is the first game. Can be used Igor vs Miami Hitrans, a 4 0 victory for me, and uh, thanks for watching. And let me know what you like, thought of the battle, what you thought of the preparations. Uh, let me know in the comment section below, and hopefully, see you next week where I face the. Oh, I don't know what the. I think the Duns Parsonals. I face the Duns uh, Funny story the Duns uh, are the team from season 1, the first team I beat in the season 1, and they have returned in the season 2. Uh, they took over from a fancy place with the Hamilton Harrow Crosses, which unfortunately dropped out due to personal reasons in the uh, first season, uh, in the second season, uh, in the first league. So, um, yes, expect me to beat uh, the Dunn's Parsons again, although I think he kind of wants to beat me this time too. So, we'll see. Uh, see you next time.